March 8, 1994. Were you briefed by your friend, Chief of Staff Maggie Williams, about her meeting with Roger Altman? And did you know it was wrong? Republicans level questions at the First Lady, but is Hillary Clinton really the center of the Whitewater controversy? She is a major figure in what is now the first quite serious scandal of this administration. Or is the president's wife just a victim of partisan politics? I think it's not coincidental that we've got the strongest woman in the White House in years, and she becomes the target. Tonight, Hillary Clinton, political pawn or major player in the Whitewater affair. <laughs> This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. We're going to be talking about Hillary Rodham Clinton tonight, and it seems appropriate to note at the outset that no matter what you say about the First Lady, someone is likely to interpret it as politically motivated. So let's just move on. Is Mrs. Clinton political fair game? Absolutely. The president has put her in the vanguard of developing an enormously complicated and controversial piece of social engineering, a new health plan for the country. She knew that she would take a lot of heat when she accepted that role, and she also knows that Washington is a very tough town. Is it reasonable, though, as Mrs. Clinton has done, to imply that those criticizing her role in Whitewater are doing so to sabotage her efforts on the health plan? Yes and no. There is no doubt that many of those who oppose the health plan are only too happy to see Mrs. Clinton distracted and weakened by the Whitewater fiasco. But that doesn't mean that the criticism is inappropriate, unjustified, or unworthy of a straightforward answer. Mrs. Clinton is a player in this administration and, by all accounts, quite capable of playing hardball. She cannot be fired, she cannot be disciplined, but she can and should be subjected to public scrutiny. That's not only fair, it's essential. We begin with this report from Nightline correspondent, Chris Bury. The question has chased them their entire political life. Does Hillary Rodham Clinton help or hurt? As First Lady, she has dazzled and dismayed with her high-wire performance, juggling enormous power and tradition and even glamour. But now that Hillary Clinton has also been drawn deeper into the vortex of white water, that old chestnut, does she help or hurt as bubbled to the surface once more? Well, during the campaign, she helped enormously. In fact, he could not have been elected without her. But now she's clearly hurting him. Uh, it's just been one problem right after another from health care to whitewater. Uh, it's a product, uh, in part, of this unprecedented, uh, the unprecedented nature of this two-headed hydra, which is really what the Clinton presidency is. The Whitewater problems go back to Hillary Clinton's role in the original land deal. Last month, James McDougall, the Clinton's former partner, told Nightline it was Hillary Clinton who carried the briefcase in the family. If there was any business to discuss, I discussed it with Mrs. Clinton and not with the governor. Mrs. Clinton's legal work for McDougall's savings and loan while her husband was governor has raised a possible conflict of interest. The special counsel is also exploring a spider's web of connections to the Rose Law Firm, including allegations Whitewater documents were shredded, and the suicide of former partner and Hillary Clinton friend Vince Foster. Fairly or not, all this has ignited a front-page debate over Hillary Clinton's ethics. The American people can worry about something else. Her moral compass is as strong as anybody's in this country, and they will see that. The president defended Hillary Clinton by saying the following, quote, I have never known a person with a stronger sense of right and wrong in my life, ever. Well, Mr. President, that seems to be the problem. The Republicans have decided that Senator D'Amato will be the ethical spokesman for the Republican Party in the Congress. That is their right to do that. I'm not in the business of answering his questions. In Hillary Clinton's case, though, the most nettlesome questions have less to do with ethics than judgment. Is Hillary Clinton partly responsible for initial stonewalling on Whitewater? Why did she so resist the appointment of a special counsel? What did Mrs. Clinton know about possibly inappropriate briefings with federal regulators? The First Lady's Chief of Staff, Margaret Williams, and her press secretary, Lisa Caputo, 
have been subpoenaed along with eight other administration officials to tell a grand jury about those meetings. Even Hillary Clinton's supporters concede her insistence on a zone of privacy has hurt the president. I think that's the big problem here. And that zone of privacy is not only for the public, it's within the White House. I think she doesn't really sit down and tell anybody else exactly what's going on. And so, you know, you have them then holding meetings in secret, not wanting to confront her, not knowing exactly what's there. And I think that adds to the chaos of a staff that's essentially pretty inexperienced in the ways of Washington. Whatever Hillary Clinton's role in Whitewater, it now has the White House press corps rethinking their rules for covering the First Lady. She's being treated a little bit more skeptically now than she was six months ago. But the fact of the matter is, if this was George Stephanopoulos or Mac or any of the other senior men in the White House, they would be being pilloried right now. And she's just not. I think people don't know what to do with Hillary Clinton. They don't know exactly how to cover her. And I think that the coverage has been a little bit manic. Um, we didn't cover Whitewater or her role in it well enough during the campaign. Now you can't open a paper without seeing, you know, hundreds and hundreds of inches devoted to Hillary's role. It is time for you and for every American to stand up and say to the insurance industry, enough is enough. Hillary Clinton's attacks on insurance lobbyists and drug makers have long attracted powerful enemies and allies alike. But in the wake of Whitewater, her judgments on everything from presidential appointments to health reform have become fair game as well. In the health care plan, they took 10 months to put it together. This is a plan which, as far as I can see, is incapable of winning majority of votes in the Democratic House and majority of votes in the Democratic Senate. I think that's at least arguably bad political judgment. I think it's extremely important that we stand up against this kind of blatant attack on this woman. Today, outside the White House, the National Organization for Women rallied in Hillary Clinton's defense. White water is no water gate. This seems a very kind of a bogus exploitation of a possibility of wrongdoing. All these attacks on her character and on her personally are just an attempt to discredit the work that she's done on, uh, on the issue of health care. In the last few days, the First Lady has kept a low profile. But she told Elle magazine, hours before the Whitewater subpoenas were served, quote, this is a well-organized and well-financed attempt to undermine my husband and by extension, myself. A former top aide to Rosalind Carter also sees sexism at work. Anyone who breaks the mold, any first lady who really tries to do something different and doesn't apologize about her power is, you know, forced to be stoned in this town because, quite frankly, people can't deal with, Washington can't deal with strong political spouses. The perennial dilemma, though, is whether to treat Hillary Clinton as a political spouse or political powerhouse. When you have somebody who's in the public policy making arena, as Hillary Rodham Clinton is, making major decisions on public policy, an important political figure and operationally, uh, she should be subject to the same criticism and receive the same praise as anyone else that's operating in that position. And she's operating, in effect, like a major cabinet secretary. The problem for the White House now is whether the latest criticism on Whitewater will hurt the president on such things as health care or undermine Mrs. Clinton's own ability on other issues? The answer to that larger question, does Hillary help or hurt, seems to depend on whom you ask and when. This is Chris Bury for Nightline in Washington. When we come back, we'll be joined by one of Hillary Clinton's strongest critics in Congress, Senator Alphonse D'Amato, and by White House advisor Mandy Grunewald. We'll be back in a moment. This is ABC News Nightline. Brought to you by Isuzu. Joining us now in our Washington bureau, one of the members of Congress making the strongest charges against the First Lady, Senator Alphonse D'Amato. Also joining us here in Washington, Mandy Grunwald. She's an advisor to the White House on political and media issues. She is also a partner in the Washington consulting firm of Grunwald, SQ, and Donnellan. Senator D'Amato, I don't know whether it's even fair to say that you're making charges. You, you, are, you are certainly raising questions. Why don't you... Uh, just give us the two or three questions that you feel need to be answered and, and tell us by whom and why. Well, Ted, I think your, your last characterization is a correct one. We've been asking questions. We started out with attempting to find out uh, what the independent regulators were doing. In other words, we asked Mr. Altman, who was the head of the RTC, when the statute of limitations was running. Were they seeking any tolling agreements? Were they pursuing this case as they have and would 
and in the ordinary circumstances, and we ran into stonewalling, obfuscation, and it was only because the Congress raised these questions that a special counsel was appointed, and that we finally had one hearing, and that we determined uh, as a result of that hearing, it came out that there were these three meetings. Otherwise, no one would have known. Senator, let me just jump in for a moment and let Mandy Grunewald at least respond to a few of the things you've, you've said. Are we talking here, Ms. Grunewald, about uh, White House obfuscation? Are we talking about White House bumbling? Or is there a totally benign explanation for everything that's happened? I, I heard obfuscation, stonewalling, I mean, some fairly loose use of language, I think really inappropriate. The White House is cooperating with the special counsel that the Republicans, including Senator D'Amato, were very strong in saying was needed. The White House had agreed finally to, uh, to uh, have that special counsel appointed, and every possible attempt is being made to cooperate fully. That's a proper way for these charges to be examined. Well, it, it may be a proper way for the charges to be examined, but, but let me just bring it back to the, the core of what Senator D'Amato was saying. There were some meetings. Uh, in which members of the White House staff took part mm -hmm. with uh, people who were not really appropriately meeting with members of the White House staff when an investigation like this is still hanging. Can we agree on that at least? Well, I think the President has already made the point several times that he wishes those meetings hadn't taken place, um, but that is, to his knowledge there's nothing inappropriate that happened in those meetings. How can the president say that nothing inappropriate happened at those meetings if the president doesn't know what happened at those meetings? I, I think the president has, had, has asked questions and been given answers. That's why. Um, I think the key issue here is whether the White House is cooperating fully, whether there is a process in place to get proper answers to these questions, and whether we get this out of the realm of ranting and political charges and get on with the business of the country. Can we come back for a moment to what at least we have decided ought to be the, the central subject for tonight? And Senator D'Amato, I'm interested to what extent you think that the First Lady has been involved in any fashion, appropriate or inappropriate, uh, that causes her to be the, uh, the proper focus of, of a Senate investigation? Well, I think, Ted, when we look at the uh, very beginning uh, of our finding out that uh, uh, Maggie Williams was there when documents, uh, as it related to uh, Whitewater and Madison were taken from Vince Foster's uh, uh, files and from his room. Uh, I think totally inappropriate. Uh, what role did she play? What documents uh, uh, were given to whom? Uh, what uh, uh, what was her role in the first meeting with various Treasury who, Department? Who are we people? talking about? Maggie, Maggie Williams. Maggie or, Williams, or, or who is First Lady? My, Maggie my, my, Williams. Yeah, but my question, Senator, is about the the inappropriateness yeah. of anything that the First Lady well, made. Well, again, this is the First Lady's chief of staff. So, I mean, that's why I mention her. This is Mrs. Clinton's chief of staff. And so we in the Congress have a right to know what, what were you doing and what have you done with these documents and why, were you, why was Maggie Williams, the First Lady's chief of staff, at this, at this briefing? Um, now, of course, uh, uh, Mrs. Clinton was a, is a very fine lawyer, one of the nation's top 100. Uh, did Maggie Williams and, or, and did others at these meetings come back and, and brief Mrs. Clinton? Did they brief the president? Um, she's, she's a very powerful individual in her own right. And, and, of course, the question as to what she did or didn't do with respect to Whitewater and her representation and, and the lawsuit against Lassiter, a, a friend that she participated in, raises questions as to the efficacy of her being involved in a lawsuit to recover taxpayers' money taxpayers' money, in, and being a litigant against a good friend in that case was settled. So okay. these, Senator, these Senator, are reasonable no, questions. Fine. <laughs> and and uh, since you have raised them, uh, let me ask Ms. Grunewald's indulgence. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I'm sure she may have a word or two to say in response to Senator D'Amato. We'll be back in a moment. So... And we're back with Senator Alphonse D'Amato and Mandy Grunewald. Ms. Grunewald, um... I'm, I'm not altogether sure that I quite understand what the charge is against Mrs. Clinton, except that her chief of staff was involved in something here, but you go right ahead. Well, it's, it's hard to keep track of all of Senator D'Amato's charges, but let me see if I can help you with a few. All of these questions, I believe, have been answered by the White House. Let me start with the first one that I think he raised, the question he raised on the Senate floor today, Maggie Williams' meeting and whether she informed uh, the First Lady. She didn't. The White House already told, said that today. 
Uh, Maggie Williams in Vince Foster's office on the night of his suicide. It has already been printed in several papers uh, that Bernie Nussbaum said she was sitting on a couch sobbing, as many people it were in the White House that night. It was a terrible and tragic night. This is not about Senator D'Amato looking for answers. Those answers have been given. This is a political issue. Every time the Republicans have been in trouble, they have turned to Hillary Clinton and started attacking her. They did it at the Republican convention in 92. They did it when she was appointed uh, to run the health care commission, trying to use legal ways to shut that down. And they're doing it again because they can't talk about the economy, which is beginning to grow. They can't talk about health care. They've got no answer there. They can't talk about crime. They can't talk about welfare. And they're going back after her. This is about politics. The legal questions are being answered by a special counsel the political issues you're watching in front of you. Senator D'Amato... Um, you, you know, I've you, never heard such nonsense in my life. I, well, have not well, made any, I have not made any charges uh, against the First Lady. I said, let us have the facts. Well, by, the implica special, by, special by, 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 by implication, Senator, yeah. you have. I mean, well, when, let you, me say when, you, when you yeah. emphasize the fact that the First Lady's uh, Chief of Staff yeah. uh, inappropriately attended meetings... Well, that's a fact. I, I understand. That's a fact. I, I understand. I mean, and, I didn't and, create and there's, that. And we, there's no, there's no yeah. disagreement on that note, sure. but Ms. Grunewald says that there was no briefing of the First Lady. Well, you know, we have a right to ask that question. If she goes to this meeting... And, and let me ask you, did Bernie Nussbaum, did Maggie Williams, did the president's uh, uh, troubleshooter, Lindsay, did all of them who, who've met at one, two, and sometimes three, uh, three times, are we to believe that they didn't tell the president or the first lady about what was going on? I find that rather difficult to believe. Reasonable That's, questions. Well, uh, if you'll hold up a second. Asked and answered. Asked and answered by the president and the first lady. Well, so they're saying that they've never, you're saying that they said that they have never been briefed. That's fine. If that's their answer... The president was asked the question today at the press conference. Well, you mean today for the brief. first time, and I'm supposed to not be able to ask without being accused of entering into politics. Well, you know something? Senator, for you to make you these, for these blatant charges, when, <laughs> when it is our obligation to ascertain whether or not the White House was interfering with the independent investigators, and you say we shouldn't ask that. Of course we have a right to ask that. And if we didn't ask it, we never would have learned it. Senator, yeah, <laughs> Congress will do what Congress will do, but you have to understand that when I look at this and I look at what you said about how important it was to have a special counsel to really investigate this, that's not enough for you. They well, did didn't absolutely you fight that every step of the way. The you special counsel, did. the special you, you, counsel, the White House fought, fought, White House fought against Senator, it. Senator, I was trying to make counsel. a point. Well, I, I mean, but when I, you misstate you, the facts, you'd make it say like you went out and sought the. Uh, the special counsel. You certainly I, I did not. I believe I made the point that it took a while for that special Why? counsel to be to be appointed. But Why? that counsel is Why in was that? place Why now. Why was that? Would you uh, would you tell the American people that you really wanted to get to Senator, the bottom of this? Senator, what's the point? The what? special counsel I, I, is I, I in think, place think, now. I think you are using this as a political no, issue, that's not and the I want to know what it is that you have as a party and as an individual against the idea of a woman who is in power, a good wife, a good mother, and an effective person in the White House. What's the problem you've I, got I with that? I have no problem with that. And for you to suggest that is, is attempting to, to manufacture a false issue. No, because I we know there entitled, is... No, wait a minute. I, I don't know what other, if other people have problems with that, but I certainly don't. All I'm saying is that the American people have a right to know whether the independent agencies, there was an attempt by the White House to reach in and to tamper with their legitimate process. It would seem to me that with all of the, 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 the attempts to stop a, a special prosecutor at first and now to stifle Congress from its legitimate <laughs> role, which is to oversight of these committees, that, and, and then to say, oh, oh, you're interfering with our job, that smacks of what took place with let Watergate. Let me try and jump in just for one moment because we're down to our last couple of minutes. Uh, and, and, and let me see if if I can at least say something that each of you uh, will find distasteful. A, uh, it does seem quite clear that the White House made every effort it could possibly make uh, to stymie the appointment of an independent counsel, that an independent counsel was in fact appointed over the initial objections of the White House. But now, Senator, that the independent counsel has been appointed, why muddy the waters by trying to bring in some kind of a congressional investigation. Why not let the independent counsel simply do his work? Well, Ted, he, he has uh, uh, work to do, and I, we're going to be meeting with him tomorrow to see if we can't uh, conduct the oversight of, of, the, uh, of the committees 
of the independent organizations, the RTC, the FDIC, uh, without muddying the waters. I think we can. In other words, we're not going to try to just bring in any witness willy-nilly uh, and grant them immunity as was, was done in the Iran-Contra uh, situation, but we do have a legitimate role to see to it that these organizations operate independently without interference from the White House or the Congress. And, and I think we can do it in such a way that we do not impede his investigation. We've been helpful to date. He may not have known or learned about those three meetings were it not for the Congress and for our oversight hearings. All right, a closing thought from you, Mandy Grunewald, and then we'll wrap it up. The special counsel has a job to do and has asked in a written letter to Congress not to have Congress hold hearings. Congress will obviously make an independent decision. The White House's job, which it's doing fully, is to cooperate with the counsel to hand over every document in the place, which it's turned itself inside out to do. Uh, we have a new White House counsel with Lloyd Cutler with a great deal of experience and wisdom to bring to the situation. And the point is to move forward, not just to let the counsel move forward, to let the president and the first lady move forward with the nation's business. And we'd hope the Republicans would join them in that. Manny Grunewald, Senator D'Amato, I thank both of you for joining us. Good of you to be here. I'll be back in a moment. I'm an eye doctor because I like to help people see better. Lens Crafters does a great job in helping that happen. Can you read that? Uh-huh. Good. We provide an extremely thorough... From ABC News, the premiere broadcast of Turning Point. Diane Sawyer talks with the women of the Charles Manson family in their first interview in 25 years. That's on Turning Point, premiering tomorrow on this ABC station. And that's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. If you wish a video cassette version of Nightline, the cost is $14.98 plus $3.95 shipping and handling. Nightline is a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. Wednesday, it's Home Improvement at a special time, 8, 7 Central. Then, from the producers of Home Improvement, Mom and the kids want to move in with Grandpa. Can we stay? No. And is he going to have his hands full? Your kids don't respect... ...that she would take a lot of heat when she accepted that role, and she also knows that Washington is a very tough town. Is it reasonable, though, as Mrs. Clinton has done, to imply that those criticizing her role in Whitewater are doing so to sabotage her efforts on the health plan? Yes and no. There is no doubt that many of those who oppose the health plan are only too happy to see Mrs. Clinton distracted and weakened by the Whitewater fiasco. But that doesn't mean that the criticism is inappropriate, unjustified, or unworthy of a straightforward answer. Mrs. Clinton is a player in this administration and by all accounts, quite capable of playing hardball. She cannot be fired, she cannot be disciplined, but she can and should be subjected to public scrutiny. That's not only fair, it's essential. We begin with this report from Nightline correspondent, Chris Bury. The question has chased them their entire political life. Does Hillary Rodham Clinton help or hurt? As First Lady, she has dazzled and dismayed with her high-wire performance, juggling enormous power and tradition and even glamour. But now that Hillary Clinton has also been drawn deeper into the vortex of Whitewater, that old chestnut, does she help or hurt, has bubbled to the surface once more. Well, during the campaign, she helped enormously. In fact, he could not have been elected without her. But now she's clearly hurting him. Uh, it's just been one problem right after another, from health care to Whitewater. Uh, it's a product, uh, in part, of this unprecedented uh, the unprecedented nature of this two-headed hydra, which is really what... March 8, 1994. Were you briefed by your friend, Chief of Staff Maggie Williams, about her meeting with Roger Altman. And did you know it was wrong? Republicans level questions at the First Lady, but is Hillary Clinton really the center of the Whitewater controversy? She is a major figure in what is now the first quite serious scandal of this administration. 
Or is the president's wife just a victim of partisan politics? I think it's not coincidental that we've got the... But the Clinton presidency is. The Whitewater problems go back to Hillary Clinton's role in the original land deal. Last month, James McDougal, the Clinton's former partner, told Nightline it was Hillary Clinton who carried the briefcase in the family. If there was any business to discuss, I discussed it with Mrs. Clinton and not with the governor. Mrs. Clinton's legal work for McDougal's savings and loan while her husband was governor has raised a possible conflict of interest. The special counsel is also exploring a spider's web of connections to the Rose Law Firm, including allegations Whitewater documents were shredded and the suicide of former partner and Hillary Clinton friend Vince Foster. Fairly or not, all this has ignited a front-page debate over Hillary Clinton's ethics. The American people can worry about something else. Her moral... Strongest woman in the White House in years, and she becomes the target. Tonight, Hillary Clinton, political pawn or major player in the Whitewater affair. <laughs> This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. We're going to be talking about Hillary Rodham Clinton tonight, and it seems appropriate to note at the outset that no matter what you say about the First Lady, someone is likely to interpret it as politically motivated. So let's just move on. Is Mrs. Clinton political fair game? Absolutely. The president has put her in the vanguard of developing an enormously complicated and controversial piece of social engineering, a new health plan for the country. She knew 